Hello students, I welcome you all back to this platform where we are going to start chapter number 3 of the book Fast Light. Students, I am your teacher Sham Panchal and I am giving you this lecture on behalf of Takshila Model Senior Secondary School. So students, first of all, I thank you all for watching all my videos that I have uploaded on YouTube. And I just request you one more time that you uh, must give your valuable suggestions by writing in the comment box. And do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you can get all the videos, all the important lectures of class 9 and 10 that I have been uploading now. Very soon I'll be uploading some more lectures. So students, the present chapter that we are going to discuss is chapter number 3. And this has been taken from class 10 CBSC book, First Flight. Students, this chapter number 3 is entitled as Two Stories About Flying. And under this title, there are actually two different stories. Two different stories which give us a very important message. And uh, the theme is actually courage. So, uh, students, the present uh, part number one of chapter number three is his first flight. Before we move on to the discussion of the chapter, let us discuss the title first. First, his first flight. His first flight, students, whenever we are actually doing something for the first time this is called the first step towards doing something similarly in a child's life especially in infancy when a child begins to learn to uh, walk begins to learn to get hold of standing and uh, get hold of various actions that he's supposed to do this is called his first action similarly for a bird uh, first flight is actually an action which is quite important for birds because birds can move from one place to another by flying only and if they cannot fly they cannot get food for themselves right so here in the chapter this chapter is actually revolves around a bird a bird that is called seagull seagull is a bird which is found near sea uh, they are often seen living in the holes of the plateaus holes of the hills near the sea uh, students, these uh, seagull birds actually feed on the fish that uh, they just dive and catch them from the sea. So, uh, students, his first flight is actually the first action that the bird seagull takes uh, to fly. The theme of this chapter, the message that the chapter gives is that uh, without putting in efforts we cannot just get success without putting in efforts we cannot just uh, the, the success is quite unimaginable it is impossible right if you want to learn something if you want to get something you must put in efforts the right way in order to get this thing so this is the message that the chapter gives if you want to achieve something you should make efforts here in the chapter we come to know unless the bird seagull Unless Seagull made efforts, he could not learn to fly. So, this is the message that the chapter gives. So, students here, as usual, I have written few points that we are going to discuss in this chapter. And these points will cover part number one. And then there is the vocabulary section. Here, I will not write the meaning of these words. I will just verbally tell you the meanings whenever these words are coming in the explanation. Right? Here we have the author's corner. The author of this chapter is Liam O'Flaherty. Liam O'Flaherty, who was a 20th century Irish novelist. Uh, students, here let us move on to the discussion of the chapter. But before we discuss these points, let me just give you a brief outline of the chapter. The present chapter that we are going to discuss today is actually about a young seagull, a young seagull who is afraid to fly. His Parents, his brothers and sister all have flown away for food, but it is him, uh, it is he who has just been left behind and he just makes a great effort to fly, but he believes that if he tries to flap his wings, his wings will not support him. So for the fear of death, he does not move from his place and uh, it is at the uh, end of the chapter, we come to know that young Seagull's mother, who is very clever, she just makes a plan and uh, she uh, helps the young Seagull to make his first flight. And uh, 
the mother of the young seagull just uses food as a trap and this is how young seagull learns to fly. So students let us now move on to the explanation of the chapter. We are going to have a detailed explanation now. So uh, students it is in the beginning of the chapter we come to know that there was a young seagull. A young seagull who was alone on his ledge. Students ledge here means protruding part of a hill an extended part of a rock. So uh, students, the young seagull was alone on his ledge because his parents, his brothers and the little sister had already flown away a day before. And uh, they had flown away for food. His parents, his brothers and his sister uh, tried to encourage the young seagull to fly but he was afraid to fly. He was afraid. Why? Because he believed that if he tried to flap his wings and if he tried to fly away, his wings would not support him and that he would fall down into space below. Uh, below the ledge, there was uh, a uh, vast uh, green sea. So he feared that if he tried to flap his wings, his wings would not support him and that he would fly, uh, that he would fall down into the space. So uh, students, we also come to know that the young seagull actually tried to make an effort. He actually uh, saw his parents, his uh, brothers and his sister who had already taken their flight. He watched them how they just took a few steps further. They just took a run forward and they flapped their wings and they flew away. So he tried to copy this practice. He also took a run forward. He tried to flap his wings but he feared that his wings would not support him and quite uh, being quite disappointed he just uh, went back to the place where he uh, was sleeping. This place was actually a little hole into the rock. So uh, students here we come to know that the young seagull was unable to muster up courage to make his first flight. Master up here means to collect, to gather. So he was unable to gather, he was unable to gather the courage to take a plunge into the sea, into the space downward. Plunge here means a dive. So students, uh, here we come to know that the young seagull was alone on, on his ledge. He was alone. Why? Because he was unable to fly. He was unable to fly. Why? Because he had uh, extreme fear of flying. He, he believed that if he tried to fly, if he tried to flap his wings, his wings would not support him and that he would fall down and would be drawn to death into the water. So students, here uh, in the same uh, text, in the same uh, Paragraph we come to know that finally his parents just come around him and they start calling him Shrili. Shrili here means in a very sharp voice, in a very quick uh, voice. So his parents just came over him. They were flying over him and they were just calling him. They were just doing what they were just encouraging him to make his flight. They also uh, upbraided him. Upbraid here means a braid here means a scald. They also scalded him that if he did not try to fly, if he did not try to make his first flight, he would just be left on the ledge to die. So they upbraided him, they scalded him. So uh, students here, this paragraph number one ends. Now let us move on to the point number two that is young seagull's helplessness. So uh, students in this point, the uh, paragraph uh, you just you should open your books before I move on to the explanation so in this next para we come to know that the young seagull was quite helpless he was on his ledge he was unable to do anything he feared that he feared to make his uh, flight he feared that he would not be able to make his flight he would not be able to fly away like his brothers and sisters did so as uh, students, he did nothing. He could do what? He could just watch his parents, his brothers and sister. His parents
parents who were flying about their uh, who were flying about their children about their uh, children especially the young seagulls brothers and sisters and they were also uh, why why were they flying around the brothers and sisters of the young seagulls they were flying about them uh, so that they could uh, do what they could just perfect them in the art of flying so that they could teach them how to skim the waves skim here means skim here means how to swarm swarm means uh, to circle around something so how to skim the waves how to uh, fly over the waves and how to dive to catch the fish so these were the arts that the parents of the young seagull were teaching to young seagulls brothers and sisters brothers and sisters so students here we come to know that the young seagull is quite helpless he cannot do anything right he is just helpless and he he can do what he can only watch uh, his parents his brothers and sisters flying about in the sky and uh, who are just uh, uh, calling to him shrilly who are just encouraging him to make his flight he also saw his elder brother who just caught his first herring and devoured it students devoured here means to eat something and uh, herring here means a kind of fish so the elder brother of young seagull uh, actually caught his first fish and uh, he ate it the young seagull watched this and when he was watching all this he also saw that his parents were circling around that elder brother of the young seagull and they were making what they were making a proud cackle sound cackle sound cackle here means a certain sound made by seagull birds so uh, students it is uh, been shown actually to the young seagull that he learns or he gets the motivation he gets the courage to make his flight uh, the parents were happy the parents of the young seagull were happy because they were happy because they were uh, they were successful in teaching their children the art of catching fish and eating it right so uh, students here we have the next point this is his attempts to gain his parents attention as we know that the young seagull had been hungry since last night since last day right so he had not eaten anything he was very hungry and he tried to gain his parents attention he did what he just stood on his one leg with the other leg hidden under his wings first he closed his one eye and then he closed his other eyes and he did this to gain his parents attention to make his parents uh, uh, to make his parents understand that he uh, was not having the energy to stand he was just about to die so he pretended to fall asleep by doing this activity by by just standing on one leg and uh, by closing his eyes but nobody noticed him well while he was actually doing this so he also noticed what he noticed first of all his brothers and sisters who were just uh lying on uh on a plateau what is a plateau a plateau is a small uh small rock so he saw his brothers and sisters who were just lying uh, on a plateau just opposite him and they were doing what they were do they were just dozing they were just sleeping right and uh, sleeping with their heads sunk under their wings young seagull saw his father who was preening his white feathers students preening here means preen is a verb that means to decorate or dress something preen is also uh an activity which is actually performed by the birds and they do what they just try to pick something from the from their feathers or they try to remove the unwanted feathers out of their body right so when young seagull took a look at his father he saw that his father was preening his white feathers and he was just lying uh on a rock it was only the young seagull's mother who was concerned about him and she was watching the young seagull the young seagull saw that his mother was actually having a piece of fish in her beak 
and she was doing what she was just tearing this piece of fish from time to time and she was also doing what she was scraping her beak from both sides uh, against a piece of rock so scrape here is a verb scrape means to scrub so it is also a tendency of the birds to uh, scrub their beak from side to side right in order to wet it wet here means sharpen it here we have a word wet so she was just doing what she was scraping her beak against a rock in order to wet it in order to sharpen it so when young seagulls saw her mother doing this and the sight of food actually maddened him the young seagull became mad with hunger when he saw this sight he became mad with hunger he could not control himself and he started making some sounds like he started crying ga 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 this is a certain sound created by seagull bird so he started creating a uh, sound so that he could gain the attention of his mother he just wanted uh, to call his mother to come near him and uh, bring him some food so our uh, students the young seagull became very excited when he saw that his mother was ready to take a flight across him and he showed his excitement by uh, stamping his feet down on the rock so our uh, students now let us move on to the point number 4 the last point is first flight so in this point number 4 we will come to know how actually the young seagull dropped his fear of flying and how he actually learned to uh, fly and who actually helped him to learn to fly so we'll find the answer to these three questions in this last point so our uh, students the uh, mother of the young seagull just took a piece of fish in her beak and she started flying across the young seagull when she was exactly the opposite of uh, the young seagull and she was quite near the ledge she just halted halted here means stopped she halted she stopped she halted her wings became motionless and what happened then the young seagull wondered why she was not coming near to him why why uh, he wondered why she actually stopped in the midway seeing this the young seagull uh, tried to make a run forward and he tried to pounce to get the piece of fish from his mother's beak but each time mother just withdrew herself she just brought herself back and she again uh, practiced the same exercise so over a number of times the young seagull became so restless he became so mad with hunger that he could not control himself and when uh, during one of her attempts the young seagull's mother came near him he just pounced he just jumped uh, he just dived to get the piece of fish and he just fell down into the space so students when the young seagull was just going down into the space the young seagull was uh, was actually standing on a ledge and uh, below the ledge beneath the ledge there was a wide expanse of green sea so the young seagull was going down headlong headlong means uh, uh, head first and uh, tail uh, head was uh, below and tail was up so here we have the word monstrous so when the young seagull was just going down headlong a monstrous fear seized him monstrous here means very huge very great a very great fear seized him he was now certain that his wings would not support him and that he would die he when he was in the middle of his flight down he just felt that his uh, he just felt uh, the air which blew across his breast under his stomach and then again against his wings and all of a sudden he felt that his wings spread out he could feel the wind is striking against the tips of his feather which were just about to cut out which were just about to spread out and finally felt that his wings just 
spread out and he started flapping them and he found that he was uh, going down no more he was just rising up he was just soaring up the more he uh, the more he flapped his wings the more he started getting up so students here we come to know that when the young seagull made the efforts to uh, flap his wings he uh, he just started flying so here the young seagull this is how the young seagull made it, made his first flight this is how he learned to fly and who helped him to learn to fly it was the young seagull's mother who helped him and what was the tactic what was the plan that she used the plan was that she just uh, held a piece of fish in a beak and she just went near the seagull young seagull but she did not uh, drop the piece of fish down his feet but what did she do she just uh, came near him stopped and then just went back so she practiced this a number of times and when the young seagull was unable to control himself he just tried to get the fish and he fell down once he was going uh, when he was just going down he tried to flap his wings and he started flying so this is how the young seagull uh, overcame his fear of flying then uh, he saw that his uh, parents his brothers and his sister all were flying across uh, flying around him and they were just uh, uh, trying to encourage him they were just praising his attempts they were doing what they were just coveting uh, covet covet is a verb that means to jump in the sky right they were just making uh, jumping they were just banking against the wind and the young seagull was quite uh, was quite proud about his uh, achievement and the achievement was that he made his first flight and so he uh, he expressed his uh, uh, his uh, uh, excitement he expressed his uh, emotions by coin cow cow here means cow uh, is a particular sound made by the birds especially a crow so she uh, he started cawing and then there is the last word his parents started beckoning him beckoning here means calling him where his parents and his brother and sisters were all going down and they just landed on the uh, sea on the surface of the sea so he also just dropped his legs down he stopped his flight and started landing onto the surface of the sea first when his legs touched the water again some fear came near him he thought that he would just uh, drown as soon as his belly touched the water he sank no longer he uh, he did not go uh, down anymore and uh, this is how he also learned how he could just swim on the surface of water so uh, students with this this chapter comes to an end we come to know how actually the young seagull learned to take his first flight and and uh, in taking his first flight his mother actually helped him a lot and we also learned how she actually helped the young seagull to take his first flight so students the remaining part of this uh, chapter is uh, remaining part no 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 this part is complete now i'm talking about the part number 2 of this chapter the chapter is two stories about flying we will discuss in the next lecture right so we have now just understood this part number 1 that is his first flight right i suggest you to go through the textbook read the text carefully and try to learn the words with their meetings so students very soon i'll be back with the part number 2